Hello YouTube, this is Magnolia Mo and I'm back with another video. First of all, I'd like to apologize for not posting a video over the last few weeks. Um, and that is primarily because I was on vacation and, um, and overseas. So, but I am back now and, and I'm going to do my first video uh, off of my vacation. So, so today we are going to talk about uh, crossover settings, speaker crossover settings. Right. So so if, if you're into home theater um, uh, and you've you've gone through and you've set up, you know, your speakers, you often wonder, you know, what's the right crossover setting for my speakers? Right. Is it 80 hertz? Is, is, do I set my front speakers to large um, and and redirect, uh, you know, all the bass and LFE to the subwoofers for all the other channels? Um, uh, you know, it, it's so for, pe people start guessing and some people just go off of. Uh, um, you know, the manufacturer's specifications and then decide on the crossovers that way, right? So, so uh, l like I said, there are three different ways you can actually go about uh, setting speaker cross uh, crossover settings, right? Um, before I get into that, I want to actually go through uh, what I do to, uh, to, to determine what the right crossover setting point is uh, for my speakers, right? So I have for many years used this disc, right? So the Avia uh guide to home theater uh it is it's, it's a dvd but it's so uh uh you know effective right in setting up your your home theater now uh, i know there are more uh, you know blu-rays uh there are there are actual uh, you know newer videos out there now there's one by technodad uh which is a, a spatial or uh, spatial audio calibration disc and in that disc you have you do have have test signals for all your speakers, They're not just your your bed layer, but your your height height channels as well. Uh, so you can you can use that. Um, but what I do is I use this one to actually just gain a, a good understanding of how low my speakers can go, and then I can then set the crossovers from that you know from that point on onwards, right? So uh, without further ado, let's get on with it. So here I have the Avia calibration disc um, I'm gonna play a low frequency sweep from my left channel and then for my uh, center channel right uh, there's no point in doing the right because left and right are, are the same speakers and then I'm gonna do one of the surrounds and uh, the uh, and what I'm trying to get at here is is where does my uh, SPL meter uh, drop off considerably right from a, uh, from a uh, the reading perspective so fr from a sound pressure level perspective right so i want to be around 75 uh, db uh, as the as the sweeps happening um and, you know if uh, uh, you know once once it reaches the limit for for my speaker then i then what's going to happen is it's just going to drop off the SP SPL readings are going to start to drop off drastically right uh in, in nearly like 10 dbs per per uh I want to say per for every for every uh, five or ten hertz, it's going to just drop off uh, drastically. So let's start. I'm going to hit the play button, and we're going to go from there. The volume again. I'm it, it is at twelve. Um, I normally listen around minus fifteen, but we'll leave it at twelve and see how it goes. <laughs> Still in the 80s. See, and then it starts to drop off. 
So uh, it the, the drop off happens after thirty hertz. So so I think I'm uh, comfortable with uh, with setting the crossover point for my front uh, left and right at at forty hertz because as you saw uh, the 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 base output was considerable and it it remained above seventy five dBs uh, all the way down to thirty hertz. So now let's move to the center channel. That's a large center as well. Does not change that much. Does not drop off. And again, I just want to make sure uh, you, you know you're understanding what I'm doing here. So I'm running a frequency sweep uh, off of you know for my left front, and I just ran uh, my center. And just for perspective, uh, I want to just show you where I have my speakers set up. Uh, I had to go in and manually uh, update the the settings right so so i've got my front center uh and uh, surround set as large and surround back set as large the uh subwoofer is set to none so so in this particular uh you know video uh what i just showed you uh basically was to the front left and the the center running large and, and while i am running this uh, bass frequency sweep okay so for my front uh, uh, left and my right, uh, you know, again, I'm comfortable with 40 hertz. My center, I prefer, uh, you know, to not to run centers, you know, as large, uh, unless you have a, a center that can produce the bass that you want and and all the the tones. So so this this particular center, the HTM 71 S3, uh, uh, you, you know, it, it is, it does go all the way down to 30 hertz. So I'm still gonna, you know, this is just preferential, right? So I should technically set it, set it as large and leave it as large, but I am gonna set it as small uh, and then uh, set the crossover at 60 for the, for the center. Uh, all right, now let's go over to the surrounds. All right, I'm gonna run my right surround. Mm -hmm. starts to drop off after 40 and that's a drastic drop off so so basically here what i'm going to do is i'm going to set my my surround my surround um is these are bookshelves right so these are the 686s uh, the bnws i don't like to set them as large unless i'm listening to like uh, music or something but but I, you know, for movies, the, the correct setting is 80 hertz for these. Even though you just saw they are able to, they will go down pretty low from a base standpoint. Uh, but then, you know, I do have two subwoofers, so let them do some of the work as well. So, so basically, I mean, that's, this is, this is essentially how you go about figuring out how you need to set your, your crossovers, right? So now, now having figured out what my frequency, uh, uh my crossover, crossover points are, I'm going to go back into this, the receiver menu. Let's go turn. So remember I said, I, uh, I can run this as large cause you do, you, you saw the, the base output right on the SPL meter. 
Um, but again, this now comes down to preference, right? So I'm going to set all the speakers to small. Go back to go. Oops, shoot. Small, small, small. This is the one that I was trying to go to. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna set all my speakers to, to small. And then, get back out. Go to crossovers. This is how I had set it. Again, as I mentioned, it's all preference, right? So I'm gonna actually go down to 40 for the fronts. I'm going to leave the center and I'm going to go down to 60 for the center. I leave the surround at 80, surround back um, at 80. My front heights uh, are the the <laughs> the M1s, the BMW M1s. So those don't play a lot of bass. So those are at 100 hertz. And then my top middle and my rear height uh, are at 80 hertz. Um, so now... That's basically my overall uh, crossovers. And then for two channel playback, uh, <clears throat> you know, for Marantz and Denons, you can actually go in and, and now pick, right, what you wanna do. <coughs> I do have uh, two subs, right? So for two channel for stereo music, I don't uh, use my subs. So I run my fronts as large and, and that's it. All right, so hopefully you saw uh, how effective this disc is. And, and as I mentioned, there are other tools available online on Amazon and, and you know, in our, in our community that you can uh, leverage as well, specifically the disc by Technodad, right? That is, uh, a, uh, uh, that is a very good tool, in my opinion, too. So uh, you saw my speakers, my fronts, you know, the, I have the BMW 702 S2s and my center is the HDM 71 S3. Um, the, the, the S2s are spec uh, to go down to 28 hertz. Uh, I've actually run the Omni mic, uh, you know, uh, uh, readings as well on on the 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 702s, and they do produce bass down to to you know down, a good good usable bass down to 30 hertz, right? So for my fronts, I can comfortably set them up as large, right, knowing that I am going to get good amounts of bass. But but you know, large to me, a, a speaker that's large should be able to play bass all the way down to 20 hertz. Okay, 20 hertz uh, is a must, right? And, and for a speaker to play 20 hertz, you are going to spend a lot more money, in my opinion. Right? You're going to pay upwards of $10,000, uh, you know, uh, for a pair of speakers or, or, or even higher, right? So, so that's the, the, that is the, the key right there, right? Like a, a, a speaker that costs, you know, $1,200 uh, per or $2,000 per or even... Uh, speaker or 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 like the the B and Ws these are these were twenty five hundred dollars uh, per speaker but then the price went up but either way uh, they're like five grand for the pair right even those are not going to play down to twenty hertz right so that is the the key is is can your front speaker or any speaker pay, play down to twenty hertz if they can uh, using the using this disc or any other tool if you validated that then by all means set your speakers to large. But if they don't, right, like mine, they start to fall off after 30 hertz. It's a good idea to set them uh, uh, as small in your processor and then cross them over at 40. Uh, I have tried 60 and I get better bass because, you know, the, the subwoofers take over. So, so it, uh, once you know what your speaker capabilities are, then you can go in and you can adjust the crossovers. Uh, you know, that, so that, that is, to me, that is the right way, right? Uh, then the, uh, there, I, I mentioned three three different ways, right? So that's the the first way is to actually validating what your speak your frequency response is uh, from your speakers, whether you use uh, REW, uh, whether you use a test disc like I, I use uh, with an SPL meter. Uh, validate what your true frequency response is, and then set up your crossovers based off of that. Then and then the second option is is to look at the manufacturer specifications, right? Um, and, uh, and, and if this, the specifications say 55 hertz uh, is plus or minus 3 dB and, uh, I don't know, 49 hertz is 
is plus or minus 6 dB, I would, I would set the crossover 10, um, uh, 10 hertz above uh, the lowest crossover point rate. So if, if it was 49 hertz, uh, uh, 49 hertz at plus or minus 6, 6 uh, dB, then I would set the, the crossover at 60 hertz. Uh, and be done with it. I mean, 80 would be better in my opinion in that case, uh, but still. But And if your uh, manufacturer specifications for your speakers, uh, say 40 hertz, plus or minus uh, 6 dBs or plus or minus 3 dBs, then then by all means, you know, set them up to 50 hertz, um, uh, the crossover at 50 hertz, so 10 dBs above uh, and, and be done with it, right? Uh, <clears throat> but again, y y when you do that, you're actually at, at the mercy of... Uh, uh, the manufacturer's specifications, right? So, so essentially, what you're going off of what they're saying, regardless of whether the speaker can perform or not. Uh, and then the third option is to just go off of the THX uh, recommended crossovers, right? Which is 80 hertz for uh, for movies, right? So you know you have speakers that are capable of of producing bass at least down to 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 70 hertz, right? Uh, and uh, and 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 now you can just you know, evenly just set across the board, just set set 80, 80 for all your channels, and 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 that would be your crossover setting. So that's that is uh, to me the third option, which which is the safest option. It is the safest option because you're not um, uh, just setting a crossover randomly, right? Whether you're based off of a manufacturer specification and and losing out on base, uh, you're guaranteed. To get, you know, especially in movies, right? Uh, you're guaranteed to get your the most out of, uh, you know, from from the low frequency standpoint. Uh, so, so that so that's the the third option. So, number one, use use a tool, a disc, you know, or or a software to validate what your uh, crossover frequencies are, and then set up the crossover. Number two uh, is to to essentially go off of your manufacturer's uh, specifications and and um, and and take their take take their word for it, and then set up your crossover based off of that. Number three, utilize the universal THX setting of 80 hertz, uh, which you know, in my opinion, you can't go wrong with that. Um, so that's that's basically it. So if you like videos like these, uh, and if you like content. Uh, such as this, uh, you know, uh, please go ahead, subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to grow this channel. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, I'll see you in the next video. Uh, my next video, I plan on on actually uh, doing volume two of uh, uh, my uh, of of the the subwoofer frequencies, the LFE, uh, it, you know, it's movies with the with low with with extreme LFEs, right? So I'm, I'm planning on doing vol volume two uh, of that. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. So if you like this video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Um, and I will see you guys in the next one.